Um, this is Julie Dore, and it is April 22nd, 2011. I'm interviewing Mr. Rodriguez at his res residence in Westminster, Maryland. This interview will be part of a collection that will be viewed and archived with, by others within the Com Carroll Community Media Center. So, hello, how are you? Pretty good. Um, first off, we want, this is uh, for a living history report. Um, I wanted to find out if you can let us know like when and where you were born. I was born in Montevideo, Uruguay, South America, in April 7, 1937. Um, and when did you move to the States? I moved to the States about 42 years ago. How long have you how long have you lived in Carroll County? Uh, about ten years. And um and do you have any siblings? Ah, uh, yes. One in South America. Okay. And um when you were growing when you were growing up in in South America, what was the life like? Like how how things were when you were young? Like when you went to school and how the education was, your family? Yes, I go to the neighborhood school, uh, just a couple blocks. And I later I moved to Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I finished my schooling there. My mother was living in Argentina. Mm -hmm. and I finished my high school back in Uruguay. Mm -hmm. And um, so, what did you what did you like most about school? So, what did you like mostly about school? Well, it was so long ago that I don't remember much. But uh, I liked the school. Uh, in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I went to a school that was one of the biggest schools in Argentina. I was, uh, how you call it, when you sleep in, in the school. Like a boarding school? A boarding school. It was a boarding school. Catholic. Mm -hmm. Princess was the one running. And I that's where well, I finished my elementary school. And it uh, was a very good school. And it uh, was a country school. It was uh, very, very big. And please, the school was uh, built to all about a thousand students. But they only were 300 uh, inmates and 150 every day. I mean, did they go over there all day, but at night time they going home. Never good children. Did you like that? Did you like that when you were younger? Yeah. Or I like it. I made the, my last two years of elementary and I was a, a leader of the groups most of the time because of my age and because of my experience there. And the school had some kind of military education. We march and we salute militarily and we, when we go to some kind of parades, everybody was proud to have the, the school, the Children so that school marching, just like a military, and they very well know the uniform of the of the school. I remember.
remember one day we went with a uniform somewhere I can't remember exactly where we go but we was a group about ten children and two priests and we had to change the trains and the train started running before all of us was set up. Two of the kids don't have a chance to get into the train and stay in the station. They went to the to the chief of the station and they show the uniform and they say the priestess and the other kids took the train, but the train started before we can get in. And we said, don't worry, he gave us, he gave it to them, two passes, and they took the following train and met us in the place where we go. So, I, the, the chief of the station say, yes, I recognize your uniform, don't worry about it. So it was very, so very prestigious school. So very they, so they were very well known. Yes, very prestigious school. And very did, high, prestigious. Um, did you get to see your parents while you were in school? Did they come yes, and visit? My mother came in to see me every Sunday. They was outside the city, probably an hour by train. It, they come in to see. me. She's coming to see me every Sunday. And, and, uh, and later when I, the class finished, I went home for home days. We go home on vacation. And we go home only in exceptional cases if I, if I get seriously sick. And I got sick once. Real bad was the kind of very contagious. And there was 300 students in there. And the doctor came from school. And when he saw me and checked me out, he said, take care of the school quickly or you have an epidemic here. There was one of those, this sickness, the, the, you get a bumps. bumps all over, <laughs> I have a fever, high fever, and they immediately called my mother by phone, and my mother came that day, picked me up, took me, put me in a taxi, went right to my house, and I spent two weeks in my house until I was okay with the doctor. And after two weeks, my mother took me back to, to school. So I got a little vacation. <laughs> do you think being in that kind of an educational setting, like in the boarding school, do you think that made you stronger, as a stronger adult now? Well, yes. They teach you how to control yourself. Usually Spanish people we are bad temper and uh, they teach you how to control yourself and they teach you uh, well the education is a lot higher in huge South America and Uruguay in Argentina, the education is higher level than the United States. When my niece can we brought it, my sister-in-law, husband, and my niece to this country as a residence, as an immigrant. And my niece was around so she was in the third grade, so it could be 10, 10 years old. And 
en el más estar en lo por en desco y medio de se escamen en tres más leyo de teacher con más estar en lo en tol her de the little girl was ready for her first year high school because the location of there is a lot higher than here. It's not computers, it's, it's, everything is mentally. They teach you, they don't teach you much spelling because in this country need a spelling because the language. The language is English is a lot more difficult than Spanish. And that language don't need it to learn much of the spelling. But as yet, they teach you a lot about numbers. And they teach you how much is say, 4 by 8 by, by 20. And you mentally had to come out immediately. And that make you develop a more your brain numbers. The exercise of numbers and make you develop your brain more. Even any little kid in the third grade over there they mentally tell you any addition, subtraction, or division, or multiplication. They immediately tell mentally, no paper and pencil, no computer. They have to be mentally. And the we this the universal history and geography is on a higher degree. Anybody, any kid, know where every country in the world is. I know that in this country, don't. Because many people come in and ask me, Uruguay, where is Uruguay? In Europe. You know, and people doesn't know here the amount or the, they don't teach in the school. And I also know my kids, for my kids, they, they, don't, they don't let those things in here. That's why kids over there can in school, it's a lot higher than here. Mm. What made you want to come from your way to the States? What Money. What else? The economy. Economy here, when I can, even today, with the pay economy still better than over there. It's difficult to find jobs, good jobs, and here it's easier. I changed my job here about 23 times in the years I live in this country. When I don't like when I don't like a job, I was changing. Over there, I cannot do that. If I don't like the job over there, or the bosses, or whatever, I have to swallow it, because that's the only job you can, difficult to get. Um, and did you, did you meet your wife over here, or in, in your way? No, she was my next door neighbor over there, when she was 16. And then, um, how long were you married? Hey, 45 years. February, 46 years. And so she came back over here with you? Yeah, we came together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she didn't have a problem with coming over to the States? She was the one wanting to come. She... Well, uh, we was both working. I worked in a textile factory for 10 years. And she was working in one department store. 
She was a salesperson. But uh, the economy was so inhibiting compared to what you making two salaries and the cost of living that we reached to the end of the month with two, uh, two pesos in the back. And was we we don't go nowhere like right that. And she started one day she started crying and I grabbed her and sat in my lap and say so what you wanna do? Say that is the only job we got. Say if we can go to the United States. I say, I got a problem because I travel from Argentina to your I used to travel and I used to be alone. But I, I told her, but you, every lunch time, you go to your mother's house to eat lunch your mother and your sisters. If we go over there, you're not going to see them for years. And she told me, I marry you. I go where you go. That was the end of the discussion. The next day, I called my cousin that she was the secretary of the United States Consul in Montevideo. I called her the phone and I told her that we, we want to go to the United States. She said, come in to see me. I went to see her the next day. I say, we want to go to the United States. She said, well, you want to go to visit or you want to go to work? Oh, I want to go to work. So she sent us to an, an agent, a kind of travel agent, and the travel agent find positions in here. So she asked me three for each out of us. She asked me three recommendations from people that work for them as a domestic. And we know a lot of people over there. So it was easy for us to get that. She needed, they needed two point two pictures of one picture of each of us. And a week later we brought the six letters and the two pictures. And they make an application. They send the everything to the United States. To the agent that he wasn't connecting with them here. In Baltimore. Well, Baltimore County, but the, was in the border with Baltimore. And 15 days later, they call us that somebody here was interested in us. 15 days. From the day I told, she told me that she was coming with me wherever I go. One month later, we were in the United States as a resident, as an immigrant. No problem. Well, there were no other problems that we got today here with the immigrants. In that time, in Baltimore, there were 30, 30 Spanish people. I know most of them. And so everybody they, they know the I speak Spanish. Everybody, oh you speak Spanish, oh you say something in Spanish. Because many people yeah, they never heard anybody talk Spanish. Because there's no Spanish people here. Now there are fifteen million. Well, in New York, in New York, um, in South Texas, in 
in Florida, there were some Spanish. Not as much as today, but uh, there were some, some. There were some Spanish. Um, so what made you come to Westminster? I mean, there's there's 52, there's a whole bunch of states. Why this one? No, we came to Maryland. The people, the our sponsors, oh. they brought it to this country. They live in Baltimore, in Paisville, was a Jewish family. And they need somebody to take care of the three kids. Yes, they got four kids, but one was in school and was 15 years old. The other one was a girl 12 years old. But the most important were the twins. They say to me, these two are our treasure. They were twins, boy and a girl. And, and they were nine years old. And when the, the parents, they were very rich men. And the parents travel a lot for vacation or because I don't know, or for business, whatever. But they travel together. And when they go, the kids stay with us under our supervision. And they trust us very well. Because one day, and the little girl, the nine year old girl, she was a little sneaky, and she went uh, and called her aunt. The parent was away, but the parents wrote me what they can do in Quakina do. And she called the aunt that she want to go with her. So, the aunt When it talk to me, because she knows that I was in charge of the kids, and I pick up the phone, and she say, "It's all right with you, the Sunday coming with her with me for a couple of hours." I told her, "Say, Mrs. Hammer might leave me a list." what they can do, what they cannot do, or the, what they can do. I say, you are not in the list. I know who you are. I know that you're the aunt. Pero I am not in the list, so I cannot authorize. She can off the house, go to anywhere, with you or with anybody. I understand. And when David came back from the vacation, she called the parents and said, you can trust the people 100%. They don't allow me to take a Sunday with me. And from that day, they, they say, Whatever you say, it's go. Cool. So they trusted you. Oh, yeah. Because you respected their wishes. Yeah, 100%. Um, How old were you? How old were you and your wife when you went to help them, help those kids? I was 30 years old. I was 42 years ago. Right. No, 43 years ago. Can't remember. I just burned at 74. It got me a little confused. Um, so after that experience, then um, what was your next, you and your wife's next endeavor? Like when did you end up moving to Carroll County from Baltimore or Pikesville? When I, we moved to Carroll County, when we moved to Carroll County about 10 years ago, well, 
my wife for was going to have a country house. No, it, uh, we live in purple. Even though we have individual house, it's a city. And she's, so I was a contractor, unemployment contractor. And we started looking for, for a property, something like And we stayed looking for property for a couple of years. And one day, a nation gave us this address. And we came here, we passed by the house. About three or four times, we can find the, the number. And the front was covered with vegetation and trees because the place was abandoned. The owner of this house before me, he died in a parking lot. He had a heart attack. He felt bad, he went to the car. Before he get into the car, he fell. And a neighbor by by and saw him on the floor call an ambulance, and he died. He was dead when they picked him up. And they put it for sale, he got for sale the Torah of the man. He got for sale this for about a year, year and a half. They could not sell it because they were a disaster. Concrete floors, that part was nice, was this in the, in the garage, so. And I can, and was paneling in the walls, all the walls, and drop ceilings all over here. So I said, well, I was a contractor, I can remember. And I look in, in the back of the house, the, that was the wall, and the back of the house was a window there, was a window. And I went to, to the back of the house and look at it, and I see the, the reading I can build one or two or three bedrooms. I built three and two bedrooms. I will be able to do. And so I, I decided to buy it. The house at the beginning, the property was asking 140,000. Later, they brought it down to 120. That's what I heard. When I then I offered 90,000 because nobody want to buy that unless they have a 200,000 dollars to rebuild. So I, I decided to buy because I was the one going to do it. And I put a hundred and ten thousand dollars in materials and helpers and con two contractors. Su contractor was the plumbing and the electrician and the heating and air condition. Only those three contractors. The rest of I built it up. And it, uh, well I got one bulldozer to the grid of everything in order to build. And I built this. It took me five years to finish top patterns. Remember you when when I show you I was building? Yes, I remember. Yeah. So all that was Plenty, plenty work. But it took me five years because I was not in a hurry. But I'm 
Ruben came with the two girls, with the two, my two granddaughters. So they, they one sleep with me here, with us, and the other one sleep in the, in the room, they have in the garage. That's my office. Now it's my office. After I, he moved over here, I took it at my office. So I start rushing and I finished the job. And we moved over there. I don't even remember I have a petition here. No, you probably not. We got this room divided in two. And the fireplace was not there. And we got the bathroom here and living room there. For five years. Well, finally one day I opened the door. We was able to to have our room. Well that's an accomplishment. Yeah. Well I probably rush more because Ruben was sleeping in a garage over there in my office. Um so the the um the the your children, how many you have the children from they came, they were born in the States? Yes, all my children and grandchildren they born here in the And US. how many children do you have? Three. Three. I have a 41, 40, going to be 42 in this month. 42 years old girl and 33 year old boys, twins. So how was it like having the grandchildren and your children here at the same time living? How did that, how was that for you, an experience? Well, having the three generations? Oh, well I feel always very proud of my kids. And they, they became United States Marines. And we had two girls with the girl, the, the mother of the kids disappeared and is gone. And so he took the responsibility. He's a good father, very good father. He's very strict with the girls, but he gave her a lot of love. He educated in the same way I educate my kids. Love and discipline. With me, everywhere was straight. And today, my son, the father of my two granddaughters, she said, he said to me one day, how can the you be so strict with us and now you spoil it with my daughter? I told him <laughs> that was my job then. <laughs> this is my job now. That was the end of the conversation. <laughs> I get, did Ruben accept, accept that? Yes. And I told him that one day he going to be a grandfather. I'm gonna do the same. So, when you first moved to Carroll County, how has, had, did you see any changes from when you first moved here to now? In like, in anything, like either the um, economics or the people living or, how, have you seen any changes from when you first moved here versus now, how it's, how it is? Well, I don't see many changes in Carroll County because in 10 years, don't change it that much. A little bit, a little changes, yes. Some more progress, yes. But I saw more changes, a lot more changes. In the 30 years they live in Carroll County, in, I mean, in Baltimore County. In Baltimore County, 
when we came here, we traveled many places. There were cold country, and now it's old city. But especially Green Mountains North, uh, Route 140, and and always well. When we came this country, our daughter born here later. And we went to live in Always Mill. And we traveled from Always Mill to the Bellway. That was so country. And now it's all city. All city, all restaurants, all factories and things like that. The The progress, the, the advance of the progress is tremendous. There were no subway, no metro. The metro came, I think, about 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I can see that. A lot of it's now city compared to even the 10 years I've been here, it's changed. And um, is there, I know most of your life was, it's almost half from Argentina to here, but have you, do you know of any like history event that made a really big impact on your life, either in Carroll County or in Argentina, like a major history? Like some people would think, you know, the Cold War or Kennedy, but is there one thing that that you that was traumatic that made an influence on your life? Well, the the Kennedys when when John Fitzgerald Kennedy Kennedy was in the government, we I. That's just something most personal to me. I was very, very fan of Kennedy. And when he he got killed in my first year of marriage forty six years ago. Uh, I married February 13, he got killed in November. And was was an impact, at least to me, because I was extremely fond of Kennedy. I, I, he was the man, the great, the laws of the uh, I can't remember now the equality for everybody and I admire that not because I can this country in our country is no difference between a black, Jewish, Indian, or any other race. Everybody is equal. There are no laws or discriminations. There are no prejudice. And every time that we read in the paper, well, there, the problem in that time, we talking about 50 years ago. We read in the paper the problem that they have here between the blacks and the white. There was, the, the, 
they will not allow the blood go to the school. That was something the, the whole country was against. No, against. And when we, the day, the weekend, this country, I don't know if you heard about it, about the raids. When they killed Martin Luther King 46 years ago, I was just in this country. 40, 43 years ago. 42, 43 years ago. Quemar, you know who Martin Luther Yes, I do, I'm sorry. But you don't remember when he got killed. I was here. When he got killed, there was. I don't know, if you have to probably go to the newspaper history. There were fires. The people burned the houses in downtown. Six, seven houses per block for seven blocks. Obviously, the whole city of Baltimore was in fire. In Washington, D.C., it was worse. The fire department, the police, they were, they go and break the windows of the stores and, and I see them, they, they take movies, they take the cameras and they was taking how the people break the window, and they take the TVs and the clothes and everything and they steal it. There was, Tremendous. At nine o'clock in the evening, the city of Baltimore was, <coughs> was closed. <coughs> I can talk too much. That had been hard. That was closed. So nobody can get in or out. If you had to go to work, you had to have a, a letter from the notarized letter from the boss, the owner, that you have to go to work. <coughs> they, they closed the city with police cars every street around the border. That had to be hard for you knowing that you didn't have that prejudice where you lived and to come to I the States. I don't live in the city that time. I was living right outside the city in Baltimore County. And after nine o'clock nobody gone outside anyway. And the, and the black people was the people that put a fire to those things, to the houses, or stop a car of a black they put a fire to the black people. Houses of the black people, they don't have it in the window and the door. They have to have a, a, a black, a black ribbon for Martin Luther King. If they don't have it, they throw a mortar inside the house and burn the house. If the black man goes with his cabinet, and he don't have in the antenna a black ribbon. They stop the car and with a hatch they cut the car. And they don't hurt the people. They just hurt the property. Cars, they don't have a black ribbon. Or oh, houses, they don't have a black ribbon. They throw mortar, they fire the car. Or they take a hatching, getting in the middle of the, of the car, they break the car. You don't, you don't know. You never heard of it. No. No, but now it's going to make me think about it. <laughs> yeah, that was happening many years ago, 42 years ago, um, 43, 
Has it been more than? When, I mean, I'm 44. Did, just, just when Martin Luther King got killed. Martin Luther King was the claim man. Was a very high educator man. And his wife died not, not long ago. And I think. Um, when you were growing up, is there, do you still have a friend that you have had when you were younger? Do you still have someone that you have? Today? Mm -hmm. Yes. Every time I go, I go to his house. A boy, he's, he birthing in, in January. I birthed in April. He's three, four months, four months older than me. And his wife was 13 years old when they start a boyfriend and girlfriend. And they marry, they got children and grandchildren. And uh, every time I go over there, I call him and I go to his house for dinner. I, I invite myself. I go over there. The first time um, I didn't see them for 30 years because he moved. I couldn't find his address. I went to the old house. One day I see they do something, but happened to be a man over there that he remembered them. They moved 20 or 30 years ago. So they told me who, and I would know where he lived. And I went and come out a very old man, and he told me, give me the address. He don't got the other exactly, but he gave me directions exactly. So I went and I rang in a bell. And no, was a lady coming out. And I say, I'm looking for the Regado family. He say, I'm Regado, a young girl, I don't know who she was. He said, well, I'm looking for George. Oh, yeah, wait. On his side, he said, it's a man outside looking for George. And the wife come out. When she come out, she said to me, yes, sir, you're looking for George. And she said, I recognize her immediately. Imagine 30 years, but no, to me, no change in my because um, they don't recognize me because in 30 years I change a lot. And he, he said to me, Say, you're looking for George, it's my husband. Say, I know it's your husband. You don't recognize me. She came close to me. She said, no, I don't recognize you. So I told her, about 30 years ago, you and your husband, George, have a friend that he left the United States. And she, so she said, got you. But the mind is that she jumped on me and shook me. He said, come in and it's here, George recognized. And I went inside and he came in my he said, Don't you recognize me? Your face is familiar. I told him who I was. He got me and from there, the last 
10, 12 years. I can't go over there. I go to his house and I talk to him on the phone to call him. Matter of fact, today I have to call to South America. Uh, and we continue being friends. Like you remember old times. Yeah. And I see the grandchildren. And every time I go, I call them. I say, I go for there. You're going to prepare something good, okay? <laughs> I, for me, it's like my house. They say, God, you see you. Connie coming with me, stay here with us. You think that's important? Do you think that helps you keep yourself young? Yeah. A lot of things can be young. Like what? Well, first of all, I eat properly. And I eat a lot of fruit. You know, I got 30 trees of fruit. And I exercise. I build a machine to exercise. Oh. You know? I see that. Yeah. I exercise in there. So I can racing. Bring all these and I exercise my necks. Keep it, try to keep it down. And another thing is work. I feel good when I go to work. I feel comfortable. I feel happy. And I I got nine operations in my body. And two metal knees. But I can walk that nobody knows. And I can run. I try. I usually don't run. But I can run. So I never thought I could run after this. But I can run normally. I don't run far because I get tired. But I run. Um, so, what would you um, tell a younger generation um, how um, uh, <coughs> about the community here? How would you, what would advice would you give a younger generation about Carroll County or how this place is? Well, I don't talk with many young people about them, but I yes, I have some friends over there who work and young young people. That they come in to me, they like to talk with me. Uh, I'm very friendly with them. And I tell them uh, how did I show them how to live healthy and and, and uh, find a, a better life, a better life, like. Uh, how to eat healthy, you know. Uh, eat uh, properly. I don't cook in my way. I eat raw food and never I don't cook in my way. I like cook from the scratch. I used to be a chef. I used to really own a restaurant. And I like to cook good. And I cook Italian, French, Spanish. Uh, I specialize in those three. I used to be a chef. And I used to be a meat cutter. So I know about 
Sfutala. But it's however, you don't see me fat because I eat properly. I, and I take care of my cholesterol. My cholesterol is anywhere between 35 and 45. And my blood pressure is a 20 year old blood pressure. And my sugar is normal, low. And I don't have a major problem. Uh, I don't have nothing that can keep me from arthritis. It's one thing I got, but uh, since I take it two times a lot for arthritis a day, I'm, I'm perfect and no problem. So you're like a mentor for the younger generation at work, and like you're a mentor. You feel? Do you feel like a mentor? Like you help them with them? I help in the best in the best way I can. But uh, I help only those ones that want to be helped. I don't waste my time with those ones. Oh, yeah. That they show me that they only want to take it up on a anything. So when you retired, when did you retire from your contracting job? Well, I got my social security 14 years ago. I was 65 in two weeks when I got my retirement. But I take away, I work, I was work all my years, and I work uh, more than 30 years. They told me that I can keep working and make all the money I want. So I worked seven more years in my company until the economy goes so bad that I decided to leave it because it was very difficult to keep a track of those uh, and find jobs. I used to ask like, three or four employees. I came down to one. And so I finally had to give up. Besides, I was, by that time, I was 70 years old, 70 years, almost 71. And I thought it was about time to stop. It was a very hard job for my age. It was a construction. It was it's cold in here. Mm. No, mm. you don't feel cold. A little bit, but I'm okay. You can go and raise the, the heat over there for me. Put it at 68. I got it 60. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel the feet. But you feel cold? I feel cold in the feet. That's why I looked there because I saw that the trap was open. But it's not open, it's closed. So now Thank um, you. So now what do you do since you so since you retired and you did you feel like you still had to do something or you didn't want to sit Well there? I was feel like when I retired totally they sold all my trucks and part of my tools. And I saw the uh, there was what to do, it was boring, it was going crazy. So I decided to find myself a job. And I found myself a job at Walmart. And I, I don't go to copy. I, I feel obligated to move. If I stay here and I keep sitting in this place watching TV, I die in a year. So I've been happy the last two and a half years.
And where do you work at now? Where do you work now? Walmart. And they, and, um, um, so they do help you out? They, they're good? They're good to you? Yeah, they're good to me. They better be. Because I'm the Spanish and the temperate. I respect people. I'm very respectful per person because that's in the way I've been grown up. Some people, they lies, they like to lose. When you work with 200 employees, another employees, so you always find somebody that's not as nice as you expect. So I usually, I ignore them until they reach one point, they, they overdo. So I report it. I just have a, um, one other question. Um, you already told us about how you promote a healthy life and how it's successful aging. Um, so basically just eating healthy, would you suggest? Eating healthy, keep it moving, keep it occupied, keep your mind occupied. They say, that the mind is the first thing to go. Well, I'm going to try to keep my mind always active. As long as my mind is active, I know what I have to do. And I keep my body active. When I, whether it's good, I jump in my tractor, you know, and I go and I do things, and I do a lot of things in here. Make, a, make me feel good, <laughs> make me feel young. And um, we touched, the, you touched about the retirement. Do you think there's one specific age that one should retire? Or is it just on the body itself or your? Well, I probably never gonna retire. I gonna keep, see I don't drink, I don't smoke and so I, I practically pretty healthy, and I, I believe that if I keep a, if I keep eating good, healthy, and uh, keep going to the doctor, that's important too. I go to the doctor every four months, and I. They keep blood tested and they give me an electrocardiogram, everything. I went to a visit last Wednesday. Everything is pretty okay. So if I see that I go over the line, he tell me so I make it my proper adjustments in order to bring it down. I obey my doctor. I know him for over 25 years. And he have a record of me like that. And he can go back 20, 25 years back. And I tell him what is problem, whatever problem. For later that is, they have. And he tell me the right, this natural is coming, and he said what to do. But uh, I exercise, exercise, and work, and keep your mind occupied, and good food, healthy food, it's very important. I eat a lot of food. And I like salad. Um, I just wanted to say thank you. Was there anything that I missed that you really would like to say about your life that you that I've missed? Is there anything that you want to express? Because mm. I know when the camera gets off, is when everyone talks. <laughs> uh. 
nothing coming to my mind now. More or less, I give you a recopilation of my life since I left my own country and came here and had three wonderful kids and three and two marvelous granddaughters, which one I love them very much. All of them. I have a very good family. And they or they know that they have to keep it straight. Because they know, even if I'm an old man, they know I'm coming after them. They got to they got to be straight. And usually they they make a comments to me of everything because they know they are telling what is right and what is wrong. Actually, it just made me think of something, actually. When you were saying about family, is the family unit life different in Argentina than it is, do you see the lifestyle and family in the United States, in the United States? Like the unit, like, do they, how? Yes, it's a big forgot. different, big different. We are more united. You know, my our country children, they have to be pretty old. To, if they now, if they are not married, they stay at home until they reach twenty-five to thirty. Around there, between twenty-five and thirty. When they start looking, if they have a good job, they start looking for, for a place for their own. was well, not my case personally. I was alone when I was 16. I independent myself very, very young. Uh, I was living in renting, paying rent and work. And work. I was 16 when I started. And I was different. Uh, my kids, they were 18 when they got to Marines. My daughter was at home until she was 24. But over there, in my times, even today, kids stay with the parents longer than here. And they are, they are, the country is not big. And they live in, usually in the same city. So they see the parents very often. Here sometimes kids move to another state. And my son-in-law, the parents to my son-in-law, they will live in Arkansas. He took the phone every week. But then they go to see them three, four times a year. They come in here to once in a while. Yeah, so it is a lot. So they, um, so they, do you think that they take the family unit takes care of the, each other within versus yes, without yes. in your country versus the United States? Well, I hear people independize quickly you know, and they make their own life. And sometimes mother calls them, say, hey, you never called me. It's very common cool that. Uh, but, uh, my kids, they stay in touch. Or oh, I, if they don't call me, I call them. But they, they usually call. They say, Daddy, they, let's go dinner together. Just like that. Even my son-in-law, he called me and say, he said, Dad, let's go dinner together. Because my daughter work. He's alone. So he, invite me for dinner, or oh, I invite him, or oh, I invite my kids, 
people we go, we go to talk together. We go to shooting range to shoot <laughs> guns, rifle, and the gun they hang out. They like that. The Marines, they all, they always like that. They have, they, you know what they say, paintball. <laughs> they very, very, <coughs> they very attractive about paintball. They got uniform oh, camouflage. Paintball. paintball. I think the language, I, I was trying to understand the language barrier. Yes, yeah. They go and to another state. They got fight. <laughs> they like that stuff. <laughs> El Rafael is <laughs> his marine inside of him. He even walk like a marine. He's he's very tough. He's the one they're going to, when he, re, when he graduated from Marines, he went to Kanjun to learn how to kill with the hands. He's, he's a tough guy, but he's very nice. He's more nice than the other one. But the other one is real strong. Ruben is very strong mm -hmm. because he do he, his work requires muscle. He became a very heavy equipment with the hands. Rafael no. Rafael is studying radios, Jopla, Jopa, Jola. Uh, I can't say it. Low jack. Low jack? Low jack and, and, uh, and uh, alarm systems oh. in cars. That's why in my car I press the button here and start. Remote starts and all that stuff. He do that. And he's, he's his own in the car and he, with cables. He don't do much of the exercise. But the ruin, the ruin. And he, he said, the Ruben is more aggressive than Rafael. Rafael tried to find always the way peaceful to face the show. Rafael, Ruben, no, Ruben got my temper. I think I have one more question because I just now thought of it again. I'm sorry. When you came to the States, did the language barrier affect you and your wife? Did you, did you already know English? Or did you? Well, I, uh, my wife and I, we went one month to learn English with a teacher before coming, one month before. We just learned good morning, good afternoon, good night. Uh, how are you? And that was it. And when we came to the airport, Baltimore airport, the lady was there waiting for us. That she doesn't speak Spanish, but she had a picture of us. And she was with a picture looking at everybody was coming up. And when he saw, recognized my wife and me, say, Mrs. Rodriguez? And my wife said, Yes. And she started talking. And we said, my wife said, 
We know English. Oh, Grace, he said. Come here with me. And she went to a phone. And dialing and talked to his secretary. His secretary was from Argentina. She speaks Spanish fluently. So he gave me the phone to me. I said, hello. He started to talk Spanish. And he said, well, don't worry about that person. Go with her. She's very nice. She's going to take you to the, to where you want to live and work. Okay, yes, no, no problem. Later she talked to my wife. And she also. So then she, did she, then she ended up helping you learn English, like classes? Did and she, she told, no, she took, she took me to, to, to the house. And when we get in, she said, there's one problem. She told the couple, they do not speak English. And they, she, the lady, she got a little shock. And the husband, very experienced man, he say, oh, don't worry. With the kids, they learn English immediately. And the children, that was true. And immediately, we get in, in three phones connected. Uh, the person that speaks Spanish, the secretary, the agent, put in contact with him. And the the person talking they and us and the phone and they say uh, the lady in Spanish she give me the she give me then the address and the name of the English the professor Spanish people that teach English in Baltimore City so. I contact by phone, they contact by phone, they, the professor, and they talk to me, he talked to me in his part, and they took me over there, and twice a week, we go on to learn English over there. The lady was very much in a hurry, there we learn English, and I, when we come back that day, this is the preparation so that we speak English already because we got one little. And it take it longer than that. We learned, we went three years to, the, to learn English. And we learned to speak. But three months later, we already communicate broken English but we communicate. We went to restaurants, we eat alone, and we know how to order, and we learn. We confuse, especially hard confuse, a lot of words, like a chicken with kitchen. Chicken? Chicken. War with chick with kitchen. I always confuse which one is chicken and we call it kitchen <laughs> well, it because like. English is the most in, in phonetic word, uh, language in the world it's very in phonetic and we can with Spanish which one is very phonetic language I think in Spanish there are two words there are similar one to one. The other words, they are all different. And one thing is an advantage, two things is an advantage in English. The verb tense in English are the easiest in the world. Very easy. 
there. Five birthdays. So. Spanish. And like a 60 birthday. birthday. It's very, very difficult. We not even use all those, those birthdays. And the other thing is the um, regular American people, this is as you learn the school, you said diarily every day 500 words for the, for a routine living. You or me, we use 500 words that we repeat those words many times during the day. Like, for example, people who work in the office or meet and work in one hour. I go home. I go to work. Good morning. Oh, good afternoon. How are you? Everything okay? What I got to do today? Well, all those are repeating words that you see. The American people just 500. You probably didn't know that. <laughs> I learned many things in school when I went to learn English. Like history, the wars, the history of the wars, the certain wars. Like, for example, one very common word in English, the word okay. You don't know where okay come from. I do. Word. Long time ago, one merchant, his name was Otto, he was a German, Otto. His merchandise, when they're going to ship it, he got okay. And that will start. He say, Oh, that is okay. Yeah, that is okay. And today, we all, you say, Oh, that's okay. No. That's, that's what okay is. Come from. There's another other, I can't remember now. Hmm. Did, you, did you have to um, know English before you got um, uh, the citizenship? When I uh, went for citizenship, I had to speak English, read English. And I, it was five years. We had to be here five years as a resident to become citizen. And five years later, we applied. Three months later, we went for swear and for the test. And they talked to us. They, I answered, I say, and <laughs> I make a mistake. I don't know why. They asked me how many states in the United States. <laughs> I don't know why. I said 51. I said, where you got it? <laughs> the other state. <laughs> I think I confused because Puerto Rico. It's 50 states, but Puerto Rico is Alas and the Associated States. That's why I get the confusion. And they asked me, who was the vice president of the United States? I couldn't remember. I remember, I know the president, but the vice president don't mention much. And that time, and I couldn't remember. And was after Nixon. Because Nixon resigned. And 
Spiro Año. There was the vice president with me, so he resigned because he got in trouble with my boss. My boss was Hammerman. You never heard that either. Hammerman went to jail. My boss, the sponsor that brought me to this country. About a couple of years after, he was cut with a spear on you. Take it. Taking, keep being bright, 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 bright yeah. Money. But now Venice was thousands of dollars, and they didn't. He received that money. He didn't pay taxes on it. He got the jail for eighteen months. I don't know if he's still alive now because. He should be like 95 years old now. I don't know if he's alive. I don't know if she's alive. She was, was 37 and I was 37 years older than me. She should be 81 now. Hmm. So I won't ask any more questions, but you, did you did you need to say any last minute? Say again. Did you want to say anything? The anything? Anything that I missed? That I already asked you that. Uh, I don't know. If you have any other question, I, no. I think I'm already boring you. No, you're not boring me. This is a long story, my life. But I, I don't want to go when I was saying. Uh, Two years old, three years old. But I remember those two. I was in a country living in a shaft made of mud and a straw roof. That was that, that, yeah, that was that was my my infant life. Your first home? Well, I don't remember, I knew when I was my first home, when I bought uh, that house was demolished now. But I saw the house when I was 16 years old. I went and I was, I saw the house when my mother and my father lived. When I was, when I was, when I bought. But uh, I don't know much about that. Few things only. Yeah, my mother told me. But uh, my mother lived me with my grandmother in a country, country house. Country, country living. I get up in the morning, stay, let me get up in the morning. And we go to the neighbor. There is Five o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. She milked the cow. And I go with the cow and I get the milk right out the cow. Warm. And I drink it right there by the, the cow. Then there was a thing they was doing then. Today is it's not even legal in here. Because they got to be straightened up. Any diseases. You still see it, but they don't. They don't talk about it. I mean, people who have dairy farms, they do it. They do it. Yeah, they do it. It's good. I, I milk, warm milk from the cow. It's good, real good, very rich, buttering. I make you. Your cholesterol in them. The one in child is no problem about that. But I like it. Mm -hmm. I get up at four o'clock in the morning to go drink it up. See it like that. There are things that happen. Like it. when I was about two years old. I I don't know what 
playing with a knife. I threw the knife. And I don't remember who. who. And the knife came to like that. And the knife turned. It stuck right in mm. here. Missed for millimeters. My eye stuck it right here. They hit the bone and fell. And they cut me here a little bit. I never forgot when I was about four years old. I was in a tricycle. Hmm. Four years old I was. Seventy years ago. I was I pushed a door with the glass. I broke the glass. And all the glass is taken again. Got me a pay and a tendo. But I'm lucky. I was lucky. She's like that. They never forgot. You know, because they came into your mind, even that was very little. Any other question? No. And you? I can't remember. I, if you have a question, I can tell about that. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate your time, Mr. Rodriguez. Okay. I learned a lot. So. It was my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you.